You ready? Beautiful. Then you usually say, welcome to Can We Talk? You usually say it. Okay. Oh, gosh. Here we go. It's been like... It's all the anxiety stuff. Just Let it get it out the way. Okay, man. <laughs> Ready? Yes. And you got to look like right there, like like you're talking into the, not here, but just. I'm looking. Looking at this, like that. I'm looking. Ready? What am I supposed to say? See, that's what I'm saying. Just that's tell what, me. You could do you all just, of that to distract from this part, right? This could you moment. Just, could you just, just birth it, baby. Birth it. Birth it. Birth it. Am I saying my name first, or do I say you're welcome you to Can We Talk? Welcome to Can We Talk. Okay. It's been that long. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Okay, here we go. Ready? Welcome to Can We Talk. I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to actually... Aren't I supposed to say today we're going to actually... Oh, well, you can. Okay, go ahead, finish. Go ahead. Let's start over. It's been a minute. Start over. Can we talk? I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia. And we are so excited because we're back after a year and a half. It has been a year and a half because of COVID, because of life, because of time, because yeah. of demands. But so many people wrote us and so many people checked in. So many people binged on all of our other episodes and they were like, uh, y'all gonna come back? So here we are. We're back. And we promise we're not going anywhere as long as we can control it. And as we were going, we were talking about what do we come back with? Yeah. And that has been like a big conversation for us. Do we talk about sex? Do we talk about finances? Do we talk about in-laws? Do we talk about blended families? And all those topics are so important, but we wanted to come back with something that is that has been presented to us and that we see every day. Mm -hmm. And the question is, why are marriages failing? And more importantly, and more relevant, to the season, a lot of marriages have failed in COVID. And we have a lot of theories about that, but we're gonna get into that as we discuss why marriages are failing. But a lot of marriages have hit take, taken hits in the COVID season. I, I think I think marriages were hurting before COVID. Yes, but I think, I think why COVID, the number right, why I think COVID the was the was the um the atmosphere the catapus. The, yeah, the, to wake people mm -hmm, up and mm -hmm. say either I don't want to be married or to see things that they really should be able to handle it, handle even through COVID. And mm -hmm. I think it was just probably probably part of the process for them to say I quit, I give up. So yeah, well, yeah. COVID required quarantine, and you have, being quarantined with someone, you actually deal with them. Yeah. Um, and as I shared with some sisters earlier when you're not together and apart more than you are together, then the value of the relationship is lost. Interesting enough, marriage requires you to be together more than apart, but most people are not. So the quarantine emphasized and high lit being together because you're quarantined and all of those dynamics that people wanted to run away from in overworking, coming home late, doing other things they couldn't do anymore. Right. The only thing open were the stores. How long can you grocery shop? Right. <laughs> so I think that that's a big part of it is that it required people to deal and yeah. face each other. So, um, you know, so we, I just wanted to speak to the obvious because again, yeah. the last time we came on, we were still in COVID. Yeah. And some people are still suffering from the after math yeah. and, and in it. Yeah. We're not out of it. Yeah. And Derek so, still gets um, COVID headaches. A year later, yeah, you know, so there are, there is an aftermath of COVID. Some of it is marriage headaches too. Not so, for me. No, not for me. So we, <laughs> we wanted to narrow down three reasons why, three reasons why marriages are failing. So the three reasons why marriages are failing that we came up, actually really four. The reasons why uh, lack of knowledge, mm. lack of understanding mm -hmm. and 
The third one the is the inability to forgive. The inability to forgive. Mm -hmm. The first one. Lack, lack of, of under knowledge. lack of knowledge. Um, th th that's big and very broad. So we're going to hone in on that a little bit. You most okay. So in all fairness, who you are when you get married is not who you become after you get married. So, but there needs to be some level of knowledge about yourself when you get married. Um, are you a, a survivor of trauma? Um, are you impatient? Do you have idiosyncrasies about yourself that created a pattern of unsuccessful relationships? And do you know if it's you, mm -hmm. you know, and that knowledge helps you navigate your readiness for marriage. A lot mm -hmm. of people get married uh, because they think that they're going to love the same person forever or want to be with that person forever. But love requires a whole lot of sacrifice and people don't talk about that part. The other thing is the knowledge of culture. Mm -hmm. We found that so many uh, people that we meet with, they appreciate the differences in their culture. But when they get married, the depth of mm. being in the culture, uh, there's no connection. Uh, the other lack of knowledge is understanding past relationships. Mm -hmm. The person's past, your past relationship and the person's past relationship. And just understanding, you know, something, you know, Sonia and I met, we talked about our past relationships, but, you know, we didn't go into depth of what were the reasons that it worked? What were the reasons that it didn't work? What were the reasons why you broke up? Uh, are, you, are there still some residue from the relationship? So those are the other two things in regards to knowledge, understanding um, the, the person's culture and the person's relationships. That's a good point. The other thing that we need to know and understand is our temperament. Um, you know, there's four. We've had vlogs on these before. But are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Are you a blend? Where did it come from? Who are you most like? Uh, our temperaments come from our two parents and our four grandparents. Um, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Do you know what you bring to a relationship in general? The last part I wanted to, is, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a point, accepting foolishness, what does that fall in line with? Lack of knowledge, meaning lack that- of, Lack when of you're, wisdom. When, well, yeah, when, mm -hmm. right, lack of wisdom, because when I say accepting foolishness, sometimes there's things that take place before marriage and I call it foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> and but you so, gotta break that down because foolishness is very subjective. Um I, uh foolishness meaning if we are dating and we're committed in the dating process, we're we're exclusive, we're seeing each other. Mm -hmm. And I decide that I wanted to um continue to hook up with my boys, and I've been hooking my boys for 20 years. And you continue to accept that foolishness because me with my boys is foolishness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I'm dating you and it's exclusive and I'm trying to give you time and attention and trying to invest into a relationship and try to spend time with you, then at some point there needs to be a conversation about that kind of behavior. So would you call it lack of maturity? I'll take that. Okay. So lack of maturity because you can't be in a serious relationship and always just want to be with everybody else but the person you claim you want to be in relationship with mm. that's maturity you know um derek you told you said this coin you coined this a long time ago from your men's group when uh a man gets involved with a woman he has to get rid of his play toys playmates and playgrounds mm -hmm. so who you hang out with doesn't necessarily have to change unless they're immature and can't, they can't support you where you are in your life but your friends what you do and where you go has to be considered Okay, let's go to number two. Mm -hmm. What is the difference though between lack of knowledge and lack of understanding? Because lack of knowledge we just talked about. You need knowledge lack, to get understanding. And the Bible talks about get understanding and all well, that like getting, get and get, get understanding. understanding. But you can't get understanding without what you know first. You gotta know something. So, so you gotta know, I gotta know that this is a banana. I was eating banana. I, I know that this is a banana. banana. No, it's really good though. Look, it's good. But you have to understand that this is a fruit if it's not eaten after so much time, it's going to get brown and it's not going to be edible. But I first have to know so, the kind of fruit this is. So, so you need knowledge before you need understanding. So understand, let's, let's talk about marriage then. Okay. So some people, is it safe to say mm -hmm. that some people may not understand the 
concept of marriage. Mm -hmm. And that's oh, the lack of understanding. So when you get some people get married, mm -hmm. they don't understand like, mm -hmm. and they have their point of reference is what their exposure to marriage has. True been. that, true that, true that. But Jesus says in Matthew 19, that not everybody is mature enough to swim in the depth of the marriage waters, right? He said, some people should not do it. Matthew 19, Jesus said that when the disciples were talking to him about marriage. And so he said, um, I think the message translation in, uh, phrases it, the large, the, oh, gosh, how does he say it in the message? The enormity? Similar to the enormity, but he, he calls it, Yeah. I, I'll find it, I'll find it. But he's basically saying that the, 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 the relationship of marriage is big and not everybody has the constitution inside of them to survive it so understanding so understanding and a lot of people don't they get married because everybody's doing it they get married because they've always wanted to they get married because they're hopeless romantic they get married because they don't want to die alone or be alone they get married because they want children but they don't get married understanding oh i'm about to have the role of a wife and then understanding what that role is or I'm about to be the husband and understanding what that role is. We don't, we just get married for all those other agendas. So when you talk about understanding the role so we heard, understanding marriage and understanding the role and the responsibility of husband and wife. And most people don't understand that because who teaches that? Who talks about it right right and so people fall in love and they get married and they, before you know it there are specific roles in marriages and most times people don't talk about what those roles are and that drives me crazy that. because you're talking about a lifelong relationship like why well, isn't it being discussed the way that it should well we didn't that's 20 years. not everyone is mature oh, enough I, 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 you, you to live I, in I, a I, married I, life it requires a certain aptitude and grace. Okay, I, I was going to pause so you can say that with power. Go back and read that because I was yeah, talking I, about I'm something sorry. else. I'm you sorry. stopped me. That's what we do. But you read start. it. Read it again because nobody knows what you're referring okay, to. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going back to Matthew 19. Yeah, that's a moment. Okay, right. verse. <laughs> I'm going back to Matthew 19, okay, verse 11. Now. And but Jesus said, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires a certain aptitude. That's the word I was trying to right. find. And grace. Okay. It good. requires a certain aptitude and grace. That means everybody can't do this thing. And to the point of we're talking about lack of understanding, mm. that's what you have to understand. Right. That's why I want to slow you down because that's right. what I got you. And what we're saying and understanding mm -hmm. what, depending on what you believe, we are, we're Christian based therapists. And so it is what we believe. Uh, but we want to. And I love that Jesus talks about it. Yeah, he talked specifically about I love about, that. Jesus said marriage. that about marriage. about marriage. Yes, yes. So, so let's go quickly to mm -hmm. understanding mental health. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. So. Hmm. Lack of understanding, lack of understanding of own, their own mental health mm -hmm. and then someone else's mental health. I mean, mm -hmm. people are not therapists, mm -hmm. but there are signs to say, wait a minute, I may, I may have a response to things that are unhealthy. Right which is going to impact an intimate relationship like marriage. So and that's, if you, if you tend to shut down um, and you tend to become anxious or you tend to overreact or you tend to be easily triggered, then some of that are emotional disorders, right? That don't, you can't, that does not qualify with aptitude and grace, right? Right. Because right. mentally, those things have impeded you to be able to have aptitude and grace. Now, no offense to people who are struggling with those things. We say, know it, understand it, and then go get some help for it. Because you can't really be a successful husband or a successful wife if you have those dynamics. It's going to impede the aptitude and grace that Jesus was talking about. So we talked about lack of understanding gender. Did we talk about gender? No, we okay. not talk gender. about gender. Understanding <clears throat> male and female, yeah. our genders play a yeah, big part they in do. why marriage is failing because we get married and my actions and my behaviors and my thinking and my understanding from a, from a man's perspective, male gender, male perspective is coming from something that Sonia has not experienced because she's true, a female. True. She has a father, she has a brother, she's had boyfriends, 
but Derek the male is not she needs to understand mm -hmm. me and and likewise he has to understand me did you all know that the woman and the man's brain is configured differently we did not know that when we got married I was actually imposing on Derek a thought process that he does not have because his brain is not made like mine male and female we're very different more estrogen mm -hmm. more oxytocin more testosterone so we're different mm -hmm. and all those play a factor and so again we're talking about why marriage is failing mm -hmm. lack of understanding is and understanding knowledge. that yeah so let's go right into the third one which is i love how you share with singles before they get married oh lack the, of forgiveness. yeah the, the psa announcement i do the psa announcement that I do for singles when we do um, seminars and retreats is if you know you have a hard time forgiving, like you're still mad at your your childhood friend from when you were five, or you bringing up stuff that your sister or your brother did when you were 10, or you still throwing stuff back at mom and dad that they don't even remember that they did, and you are holding on to that, that means you have an issue with forgiveness. That means that you're not a candidate for marriage because marriage requires unlimited not even 70 times seven, like Jesus said, yeah. probably times that by a hundred mm -hmm. of forgiveness. Because think about it. You have two people trying to become one in their differences, right? Temperaments, culture, gender. How in the world you're not going to offend? You're going to offend until you learn that person and you learn yourself. And so if you can't forgive and you don't have the capacity to forgive, then your marriage isn't going to make it. Some of these marriages that have failed could have made it if forgiveness was an element in there because that some, was actual. Uh, uh, a fracture takes place and most people may apologize and kind of move on, mm -hmm. but the component that needs to take place is forgiveness. And if that doesn't take place, people hold on to it, depending on the, there's one temperament that holds on to yes. that, like, like a badge of honor. Ooh, you and, wear it like a badge. And until they, go through the process of forgiveness, then you may ask yourself, well, why are they still talking about that? Why mm -hmm. is it still there? Mm -hmm. Why am I still, why am I still dealing with something that I did 15 years ago? Well, mm -hmm. because the process of forgiveness hasn't taken place mm -hmm. and which causes resentment, then if those things are not resolved, then it's going to, it's going to play a part into the relationship, the intimacy. I remember saying it years ago, we, it'll be 27 years married this coming September the 3rd. And I remember, I guess it was around year number four. So, you know, I don't know, we got into arguing about something. She did something, she said something, I don't know. <laughs> but in that conversation, something's gonna make you less of a man mm, or mm, step mm, up mm. and be a man. Something to the man thing, something, you know, maybe what I'm talking about. Mm, mm, mm. And you know, women, you said that too. Not everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have to be careful because sometimes I said that before when someone said, well, I, not everybody. Okay, I'm not everybody. <laughs> okay? Most, it's, it's just not you. Right, the truth is where. Right. right. So anyway, so when she said that, <laughs> she apologized mm -hmm. for it, but I never really forgave her for it. And it's because what I needed, because my temperament, what I needed from her, mm -hmm. which required a different, another level of, of her response to what she did. Mm -hmm. Thus, I was able to give her years later. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, lack of forgiveness uh, is one, another reason why our marriages are failing. They stay in that place, and unable to heal from that hurt. And I want to encourage you to um, understand the four steps of forgiveness. It's first uncovering the feeling uncovering the negative feeling that that person's action caused you to have you have to uncover it was it anger was it hurt was it um uh fear was it rejection you know one of those negative emotions that you might have had uncover it right because usually it leads to anger if you don't uncover it and then the second one is just to decide to forgive so after you've uncovered that emotion, so Derek, how did you feel when I said be a man? Something you, why don't you just step up and be a man? How did uh, you feel? I felt disrespected. Right. I felt devalued. Right. I felt um, somewhat, maybe some rejection mm -hmm. about my role. Right. 
I felt those are probably the main. Those ones. are good, right? So he has to uncover those, right? Because that's really what prevents people from forgiving is the if the emotions are the emotions that are still holding you bound and holding you hostage. So once you uncover it, you can say, okay, these are the feelings I had. And then you can say, okay, you know what? Now I'm going to decide to forgive. So it's a cognitive, intentional, deliberate thing. Decide to forgive. And then the second, the third is to work it, to work your forgiveness, which means to keep reminding yourself that you want to forgive and actually tell the person that you forgive them. And then the fourth one is to allow yourself to be released from the emotional prison that unforgiveness holds you in. Because someone made a comment or a phrase about forgiveness is like, unforgiveness is like drinking the poison, but wanting the person that hurt you to die. That's what unforgiveness does. It only impacts you negatively. Like if you're drinking poison, you're going to die, not the person you want to be hurt by the poison. So unforgiveness is like drinking it and expecting the other person to be impacted. It doesn't work that way. So you have to unleash yourself from the emotional prison that unforgiveness holds you into. And Sonya has never said that to me since that time. Mm -hmm. She has never said anything. Because I didn't know the impact it had on you. I would moved on. Yeah, because of her yeah. temperament. Yeah. She moved on and yeah. everything was like, lovely and I'm still in my space. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what's, you know, every now and then, back then, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. You know, say something about whatever it is that we were talking about mm -hmm. or experiencing. And I still had mm -hmm. that in my head and it impacted us intimately. It impacted us uh, financially, intimacy. Mm -hmm. It impacted us sexually. Mm -hmm. It impacted us um, spiritually. Spiritually, mm -hmm. Because I'm like, if she thinks that about, she said it, and if she thinks that about me, that it, it restricted my movement. Mm -hmm. And so we had a conversation about it and I shared it with you, with her. And then, you know, I forgave her. Yeah. And, I, and the thing is, I wouldn't have known that because it, I, I didn't know that it impacted him that way until he told me. Yeah. And we don't have this on part of the, since you mentioned it, we mm -hmm. have a few minutes left. But she, when you say you wouldn't have known it, I think that's another component of why marriage is failing is that mm -hmm. they don't talk about right the hurts, the hurt. They don't talk mm -hmm. about, they kind of go on mm -hmm. without talking about it. And right. sometimes I think some people try to talk about it, mm -hmm. but the response that they get is a negative response as well. Well, that's true because I think, um, especially I've heard men say that when they hear, can they, t can we talk from their wife? They really don't see that as a pleasant experience, probably because women are tend to be emotional in their talking where they're sharing so many emotions that men don't know what to do with it. And we're very verbal in our expression of our emotions. So I think for husbands, most men feel unequipped to deal with that. So if that's you, we understand where that's coming from, but we have to have you let your wife know that that's what is happening and wives if that's you then you have to slow that train down if you say can we talk you have to throw a question out and then allow your husband to respond or share a feeling and then allow your husband to respond to uh, one mm, to mm. one thing if mm, your point is so valid but if men are watching and i hope men will be watching mm -hmm. it's like what you said <laughs> It's like going in one ear and out the other. If their wife shares an emotion or a feeling, they don't know what to do with, even the wife says she does all those steps. I feel lonely. I feel hurt. I feel rejected. I feel unheard. S some men are not able to identify those feelings I know. and I they don't know what to respond to, how to respond. And so the wife gets frustrated. He don't share his emotions. I say how I feel and he doesn't. And so that's, that's but, the challenge. But for the a lot problem of is, yes, the problem is the husbands that do or the husbands that don't, either way, they're lost because when we usually emote, we don't stop. That's why I'm just freeze framing it. Mm -hmm. You won't know, a wife won't know if her husband can or cannot respond if she doesn't say it the right way. So that's the test then. The test <laughs> is wives take, you know, Sonya gave some good advice. You some of you may do it. And you still getting wild. Right, right, walking. right. So if you say, you so. say, I felt unloved yesterday when you went and got dinner for yourself 
and you did not ask me if I needed dinner. And then you don't say nothing. Else. <laughs> that's how you'll know. And that's how you know. And then you'll know. Because see, we don't do that. You go, we go into this hole and then we roll the head. It's so, and we yeah, the hands, you know, I know and we gotta go. Huh? You know, we do we all of that. And so that's, he's not going to respond to that. But if you can just say, I feel unloved. Because some of the husbands might surprise you. Some of the they husbands may. might say, wow, dang, I didn't even realize that. And then if they don't surprise you and they give you the deer in the head, I love them to call. <laughs> When they when they don't say nothing, you say all that. Yeah. And they like this. Yeah. Yeah. And they, if, ooh, yeah. I don't want to do with that. And then you need intervention. <laughs> That's how you'll know. So, so it's not number. That's how number. you'll know. Yeah. But but wives, honestly, you have to be really really careful about how you're saying and what you're saying because we say a lot, and our husbands, their verbal centers do not over cross over. Ours do, so they can't hear. A, a, a cognitive, emotional, and an, a factual comment all at the same time. They're not able to process both at the same time. So we just want to teach you that. So a lot of the times, to your point, marriage is a failing because we do not understand the differences in our roles. Boom. And we'll stick a pin in that. Yeah. The time is up. So we have a lot of other stuff that we have to cover. We will uh, We will not be gone another year and a half, we promise. We'll be back <laughs> in a week. Okay? A week. Um, One week. So for those that are, are new to coming on, you may not have known we had other vlogs, like and subscribe, and then go back and watch some of our other um, takes. And hopefully if you have something you want us to talk about, you can actually write to us in the YouTube uh, messenger in there. We yeah. are the marriage menders. We're found on the marriage menders. Yeah, we menders respond channel. to those. Yeah. So, um... Thomas, we yeah, we do. It. Yeah, we do. We appreciate the feedback, even yeah. the negative feedback. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it is, it but is. We, we it means you're watching and you have an opinion and you have a right to it. Yeah. But we 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 refer, we prefer feedback versus no feedback. So yeah. say something. All right? all right. It was great to be back on. We hope that you all are well. Um, we know that this was a rough season. We everyone has been touched by the loss of someone in COVID. Um, so stay up, stay encouraged, stay safe, stay blessed, be comforted, um, knowing that God will comfort our hearts for those we've lost some loved ones in the COVID season and even before the COVID season. So this is a really difficult time. Um, our prayers are with you all, and we hope that you guys will continue to watch and be supported by what we bring in the days and the weeks to come. Some of the marriages are failing because of lack of knowledge, because of lack of understanding because of lack of knowing your roles, because of unforgiveness. Now that you know what, what you're going to do, do with it. it. Take Thank care, you guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye.